He just spoke. He just stepped off the floor. Tex- from Texas, Congressman Chip Roy joins us on the phone now. Congressman, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. Tell me about. Do, do my eyes deceive me? Is that one of the is that one of the points of business that was introduced today, sir? I believe that's correct. I've been able to track all the bills that have been introduced yet today, but of course that's something that we believe in and want to go advocate for, and I'm sure we will be moving that forward. I literally just walked off the floor where we were advocating for the resolution we're going to vote on today, establishing the church-style committee on the weaponization of the federal government, uh, which will be under the Judiciary Committee under Jim Jordan. Uh, Not 100% sure yet how he's decided to uh, organize that, but uh, we will be going after the the uh, deep state and the, and the weaponized government, and it's a good thing. Yeah, no, very good thing indeed. I know we've been. I think people have been encouraged by in seeing how quickly some of these promises have been fulfilled. Uh, Adam Schiff is is he off the Intel Committee? Am I reading that correctly as well? I've I read that uh, Swalwell people like Schiff have been removed from these committees, and hopefully more people that uh, you know good elected officials that have respect for intelligence and you know law and order are going to be appointed to those seats. That is my understanding. That is what Kevin said this morning. I haven't seen the final paper on it, but I I would expect that they would be taken off of those committees. I think there's three that are uh, likely going to uh, be blocked from being on those committees. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be broader than that, but certainly for sure the ones where they've jeopardized their ability to be trusted on them. The IRS, I know this is one of the things you and I have talked about before, uh, the IRS, new, the 87,000. Uh, I know that a lot of that is there's only so, so many things that the House can do because this is kind of, you know, it's said it's been uh, it's been implemented. However, being that you all have the power of the purse, you can actually free some of that funding, repeal some of that funding. Tell us a little bit about the strategy for that, because that was uh, widely or widely promoted as being one of the first things that the House would do after November. So great question. So obviously we passed the bill last night uh, that would, uh, you know, pull back on those 87,000 IRS agents. Uh, The truth is the Senate Republicans who sold out America, Mm -hmm. who sold out the House majority uh, of Republicans uh, and frankly um, limited our ability to be able to use the power of the purse to go uh, end some of this abuse by the Biden administration when they cut their deal on this one point seven trillion dollar bill in December. It was shameful. They should not have done that. They did it. So now we have to wait until September before we can use the power of the purse to uh, stop a lot of these abuses. We passed the bill. We have no belief that Schumer will take it up. But we will make clear to the American people that we want to stop the full empowerment of the Internal Revenue Service to be used as a weapon against the federal government. For example, like they were when they went after my friend Bunny Pounds, who lives in the Mm -hmm. DFW area, like y'all, and was as an organization that was being uh, targeted uh, because they're religious. And literally, now we ended up winning that, but, but a lot of us had to come out and swing in defense of them. These are the kinds of things we need to stop. And uh, this, this committee is one step in doing that and passing that bill is another step in doing that. And we'll have these debates over the next year. Now, it'll be interesting to watch. And we're talking with Congressman Chip Roy, who's calling in. He just walked off the floor. Is the House going to be able to come together after the fight? Because it got nastier than I think most people ever have seen in, in terms of uh, choosing a speaker uh, for the party. I know that there was a lot of discussion about concessions. I know there were a lot of rules that were going to be changed over from Pelosi's time anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are from that. And what can you say to, to voters out there, uh, to people who just they're they're looking to see. I mean, they're looking at everything from oversight on, you know, Biden's relationship with China. Uh, you know what that what that means for uh, national security, energy security, as we as they try to push us towards this green agenda. They're talking about banning gas stoves today. What can you tell people uh, and to give them some kind of confidence about moving forward? Because every I don't think people are confident yet. Well, they should be. Uh, what happened last week is necessary. Uh, I said on uh, Jake Tapper on Sunday that a uh, little temporary conflict is necessary in a town to break the glass. Mm. It ain't pretty. Uh, making the sausages, they say, up here ain't pretty. Yes, all of that was on full display, but that is a good thing. The American people now see that we care, that we're fighting, that we're trying to change this institution for them. There was a 180-degree turnaround among the pundit class, the so-called conservatives that were beating the, sh- the, the snot out of us. <laughs> uh, because he cared. Sorry, Congressman. Sorry. It's going to be some good yeah. sausage is what he's telling us. That's what it's going <laughs> to. Yeah. And look, like we were getting, we were getting you know, kicked around. Oh, you're clowns. You're doing whatever. And then suddenly people started saying, wait a minute. These guys have a point. You know, in December, December 8th, we put out a memo, dear colleague, in which we said, you know what? 
We want trust and accountability. We want the return of the motion to vacate that's been in their history for 200 years. We want bills to be able to – we want uh, measures to be able to see bills on the floor, 72 hours, single subject, et cetera. We don't want to have leadership playing in primaries and political uh, you know, fields and block out conservatives. We want conservative representation on committees, including the Powerful Rules Committee. We want to end limitless spending. We want to have must-pass bills be used to get actual change, and we want a church committee style – uh, a church commission style committee against weaponized government. Guess what? Guess what the debate was all the way through Friday? Getting those things. Mm. Look, we have to shake this place a little bit. Look, Kevin. Oh, I understand. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you about the church committee. Were some of those rules just changeovers that everyone had agreed to after Pelosi, like the 72 hour thing? Because if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I know I'd heard about the 72 hour rule some time ago about that being changed. Yeah. Yeah. Of, co- of course, in fact, there were 72 hours that was already in the Democrat rules. They just weren't enforcing mm-hmm. it. All of this is yeah. about enforcement, Dana. Okay. Look, we weren't going to get the vast majority of things if those five individuals hadn't said they weren't going to support Kevin unless things changed. So all the people kicking the crap out of my friends, out of Bob Good and Matt Rosendale and Andy Biggs and um, you know those uh, uh, Ralph Norman, those who stood up on the wall – I'm going to defend them. They're my brothers. We stood up and we had 20 strong last week who said, you know what? This place has to change. Mm. And last Tuesday, we had a borderline mob Republican conference that tried to come after us. They threatened us that they're going to take us off committee. And you know what? We fought through the week. And this weekend, Matt Gates and Mike Rogers, they kind of made amends. They tweeted, hey, we'll support each other. This morning, I shook Mike's hand. We said, let's work together. I took Newt Gingrich to task last week. Last week, he and I talked yesterday. This morning, we had a conference meeting, and we were united, united to go stand up against Democrats with the now tools that we have to go execute and a commitment all good that we did not have before to yeah. limit spending, cap spending at 22 levels, and make sure that we can fight for the American people. I we feel are like, excited and enthusiastic. I was going to say, I feel like maybe, and we're talking with Congressman Chip Roy, uh, and we're going to get going here in a minute, but I feel, after seeing some of the some of the video and some of the photos, because uh, I know I saw a congressman, it was Hudson who was behind Rogers, and he went to intervene yeah. in something, and he grabbed his face. We got it. We yeah. got to show Congressman Hudson the proper way to intervene in something. Because I thought either Hudson's hand is really huge or Roger's head's really small. It was a weird photo. Well, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Look, those kinds of conflicts, that's okay. Look, you should have seen this place in the in the nineteenth century. Oh yeah, I've heard I've read ago. about the history. Look, Nobody got just caned. Because we've got the cam- just because we have the cameras rolling doesn't mean we shouldn't go right. ahead and fight this out. That's what we were hired to do. I got to be honest, Benioff, it was it was an unlike off. anything I've seen at a family reunion. So, you know, I mean, I got to exactly. I got I to be honest about that. One last really super fast quick question. I know you got to get going, Congressman, as we do, too. The church committee really quickly on uh, government overreach. Tell us about that, because I find this fascinating and a step in the good direction. I know I think Massey's on that committee. Well, we'll see on who's going to be populated on it. I'm guessing Thomas will be on it, and it'll probably be under Jim Jordan. We're voting on it here shortly. We are debating it just now. The Democrats are apoplectic about it because they know that we're, 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 we're on the strike zone, you know, that we've got our bullseye on the target. And we are, um, we are going to be able to empower people on this committee to go target the weaponization of government, whether it was the school boards colluding with the Biden administration to target mm-hmm. parents, whether it's the IRS targeting people like I just described, whether it's the uh, – Uh, intel agencies and their information, whether it's FBI, uh, you know, colluding with big tech. All of these things are things that should concern all of us on both sides of the aisle. We're going to go after the empowerment of the federal government. We're going to expose it, and then we're going to figure out how to dismantle it through defunding and through uh, the kinds of tools that we can deploy to force the fight. The American people need to know this. And importantly, the the, the COVID abuses, the COVID tyranny, Mm -hmm. shutting down our economy, forced masking, forced needles. we got to expose the truth, not just the origin the whole truth. And that's what we're going to be trying to do with all of our committees, but particularly this one. There you go. Congressman Chip Roy from the great Republic of Texas. Congressman, we appreciate your fight. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to watch and see what happens. Thank you, sir. God bless you and Mm -hmm. the whole team. Take care. Yes, sir.